Okay, that was interesting. Um, here it is here. Focus on that. Um, so from Jupiter Effects in Germany, it's a basically it's a tape saturation pedal. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to work for me. I think fundamentally um, what I'm looking for is something to give a bit of crunch, compression, saturation. Anyway, it's worth a try uh, and it's definitely useful, I think, um, even on the roads. It's quite a nice sound, it's a bit harsh, but it'd be interesting to try it on something like the Lyra. It's mono, so uh, something like the Lyra could be good. It's almost a fuzz pedal. Yeah, you might have seen from my last couple of uploads, I've been in New York for a little bit. Spent some time there with my old friend, Aaron Navizi, and uh, just uh, playing with some of his synths and things like that. I was there for uh, some other reasons, some meetings, but uh, I got to spend a lot of time with him and his, um, his great collection uh, in his home of synths, mod synths, pedals. Um, he co-owns Bunker Brooklyn, which is quite a large studio and a successful studio in Williamsburg. And, um, but his home studio is, is pretty cool as well. And so that was that. Um, yeah, we go back quite far, Aaron and me. Um, we both worked together in New Zealand in the 90s uh, in the jazz world. And we recorded an album called Take Me With You. And that won a New Zealand Music Award in sort of 1996, seven. And it was about then that we both left the country. Um, he moved to New York, I moved to London. It's probably quite an interesting experiment to see how the, the different countries, or cities, I should say, um, have affected us musically. A lot of different influences and vibes going on there. Right, I gotta get on with some more work. I have another show with Van coming up. I don't even know what the show is. It's, uh, it's top secret. It's a uh, private show for somebody with enough uh, resources that they can hire Van Morrison and some other bands as well, I think. Well, one more thing, um, I'll put it up here. There's a link to a video of me and Aaron recording um, in the studio last week. We just improvised for about 45 minutes on some of this gear and um, I have cut it down to about half an hour, but I think it's quite interesting. Sonia. Hey, uh, I am in Cheltenham. Just looking this, oh, I've got to show you this. There's, so actually I'd be really interested to read this about Paul, Paul Anker. Um, but as you can see, they're all glued together. So anyway, um, here I am in Cheltenham, um, we have a show, Dave rehearsing first, then a show, and then back to London, but, you know, it's been something I've been meaning to ask you, um, those of you watching, especially uh, repeated viewers, you know, um, I'd really like to know what you're doing. I think a lot about overwhelm and how we probably all suffer from overwhelm. Um, as musicians, whether you're a full-time musician, part-time musician, um, single, married, with kids, without kids, with dog, without dog, um, there's always something to overwhelm you. Um, and also I think there's a certain type of musician um, who has a lot of ideas. I think as musicians we see, we see opportunities and, and we have ideas a lot. You know, we're creative people and we see patterns in things, we um, connect the dots a lot. I think that's the nature of music. Um, shapes and patterns and themes, connections. Um, and I think often that gets transferred out into um, the world outside music. This can and does lead to a sense of being overwhelmed. And, um, you know, there are 
different strategies to deal with that and everyone has their own way I'm sure and if you don't have a way of dealing with that then get one because I think that's the sort of thing that wears you down and will uh, burn you out and being burnt out isn't good um, but you know um, having said that I've got so many ideas and um, ideas for bands albums recordings and you know filming things for YouTube makes it even worse because I think okay you know I want to do um, Okay, for example, I want, uh, you might have seen on my channel during the lockdowns um, in the UK, I put together these uh, lockdown bands. So, you know, pe uh, musicians I know would email in themselves, filming themselves, um, playing the part that I gave them, and I put it all together. Um, so there are three of those on my channel. The last one being um, the mini Ripperton song, Le Fleur. Um, so those three tracks and some other compositions of mine, I really want to do properly, record them properly, and even perform them live. I think I could spend a lot of time doing that, and of course film the whole process, from rehearsals to recordings to the show. Um, and I feel good about that music. I like the music. Um, I'd like to play it to people. Okay, but then there's also all the other stuff I want to do involving synths and um, and there's film music and there's the commissions I get to write music for film and TV. Um, and then there's my performing career as a saxophonist playing with Van and Billy Ocean and whoever else wants me. Um, we've got some touring coming up, yeah, you know, and that's going to take up a lot of time. So let me know, uh, you know, put in the comments what you're working on. I'd like to know. Um, what's going on basically <laughs> I think it'd be really interesting if you like leave a comment on how you deal with that sense of overwhelm and how do you plan uh, how do you um, get through it how do you actually get out of the planning phase and into the doing phase um, which I think is another common symptom of um, this uh, disease of being a musician we have lots of plans um, and a lot of them don't ever come to any fruition, which is a shame. And it's not our fault. But then again, I think there are people out there who, uh, who manage to do it. It's really interesting to see the sort of um, sacrifices they make, though, to make that happen. Um, I um, was talking to someone I work with a lot, a singer, quite a famous singer, about um, his time in London in the 60s, late 60s as a musician, an unknown musician then, and, I, and he was telling me about hanging out uh, in various parts of Soho. And I asked him, you know, like, where did you live then? You know, because you're spending so much time in Soho, and I just imagined then, you know, you'd, you'd have a flat and sort of, I don't know, somewhere close by to Soho, not like now, you know, where you'd live in Zone 3 or 4 or something. Anyway, he said, uh, there, were, there were eight of them in the band, um, and they lived in a, uh, a Ford Transit van in Leicester Square um, with all the PA equipment for his band. <sighs> yeah, anyway, he's done very well since then. I'm back in my own studio now. All right. We had a show in Cheltenham, as you saw previously. Um, however, there was just no way I could film anything. Um, we had to play for a, a very wealthy family um, who made us, well, no, there's nothing I can say apart from, yeah, it was a long few days and I came back from that and then had an appointment at the US Embassy. And I don't know if you've ever had to go to the American Embassy in London for a visa appointment, but it's quite um, logistically involved with a lot of queuing and um but of course it's worth it um uh, so that was that done and now here i am what i'm going to do now is just show you the mix for my latest single um nomina nomina um which is out now on spotify and bandcamp and uh tidal and apple music and youtube and all that um it's a track i made in ableton and then brought into pro tools so I'm going to show you the Pro Tools mix. So here it is, Pro Tools mix. Um, 
you can see that there are stems that have been imported from um, the Ableton project. And um, so what I've done is I've composed, tracked, etc., in Ableton and then imported to Pro Tools for the mix. Okay, have this push play. This, uh, this track, this particular audio track here, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'd have to go back into the Ableton project to really see what the sound was, but you can see that I've done a lot of processing to that particular audio um, with some pretty robust EQing there. Let's take that out. Um, and some vintage reverb. Let's take that out. Some more EQing. Taking that out. Let's solo the track here. Some stereo width. And uh, some of the newfangled audio um, invigorate, which is, you know, often that is a um, mastering plugin. Uh, let's take that out. Okay, bring it back in. Just mute that for a bit. Um, okay, let's start at the top here. My drum bus. Some SSL, of course. And more newfangled. Um, so this Saturate plugin is so cool. Let me, let's get to where some groove stuff's happening. All right. Let's bypass this. Bring it back in. Love that. Let's move the drums. Let's solo the drums. Okay, other stuff that's happening here on the kick. We've got Fairchild compression. Let's re remove that. Just um that's a bit of a livener. And yeah, um, the Little Lab's Voice of God. Let's bypass that. It's just the lower frequencies is sort of emphasizing, which is what it does on voice, obviously. Um, for some reason, I use another kick. And um, here we go. The funf. With the same, the same uh, dynamics and voice of God. The Fumph, this track, um, is a um, pure magnetic, I think it's the, the company called, it's a uh, plugin for live, so it's just a kick drum synth. Um, okay, let's see these hats here. A lot of the time, my hats and clips and things are from digi the Digitact. So um, that's probably where that came from, but let's see. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite plugins, actually, the Baby Audio Tape plugin. Let's just bypass it. Okay, so it's giving a bit of edge. And then uh, some more saturate here as well. Let's bypass that and the tape. All right, bring it back in. I like that. Okay. Some clicks, <laughs> severely EQ'd. 
that's without EQ. So I bet you what, what was happening here is this is a, a recorded performance from the Digitact. Would it be um, some sort of percussive elements in the Digitact setup? And then I just didn't like what was happening there. So I just got rid of it and left that, which I do like, and added some vinyl. Let's mute that. Yeah, the, the vinyl is very subtle. Um, and I think that's it really for the groove. Oh, there's some white noise. I'm really getting into just using white noise as a sort of snare drum. Uh, white noise with a bit of decapitator, of course, and some more newfangled audio. Um, the set, the setting here is called toasted speakers, which seems appropriate. Let's mute the, I bypass that. Okay, so it's, it's making it crisper. Okay, uh, what else is going on? Some strings, so this is probably a string sample. I quite enjoy um, putting in string samples from some of my soundtrack recordings, especially on, you know, takes that weren't used, that sort of thing. Um, and in Ableton, I would have processed that quite a lot, make it sound like it wasn't strings. Uh, I didn't obviously go that far with it, but there's some uh, wobble. And of course, some Lyra. Lyra is being EQ'd a lot. And decapitated. So almost, I'm using the decapitator as a EQ there. You see, it's very bright. Korg effects. Now, um, this will... Let's find where it is here. Korg effects has some. Let's go to this bit. All right, so um, this is my Korg 700. As you can see, there, there. <laughs> um, obviously, a lot of the effects were done in Ableton, but I've brought in some black hole as well. Let's bypass that. It's quite nice. And some, um, yeah, just thinning the, the signal a bit, making it less wide. And then again, the Korg as a bass. It's a bit loose. Um, obviously, this particular synth doesn't have MIDI. So it's just played in. And um, you can probably actually see me playing it on an earlier video. Um, let's have a look at what we've got. Oh, there's a lot of automation happening there. Wow, a lot of automation. Okay, some Fairchild compression, some more voice of God. I've used this Little Labs plug a lot in this track. And Newfangled, Punctuate, let's, let's bypass that. Mm. And some of the Fab Filter Saturating plugin. Thank you for your tip. Um, Okay, that's clean. And then with the saturation. Let's just... Uh... Yeah, again, there's some mini Moog stuff going on too. Oh, okay. Um, obviously, um, 
I don't own a Mini Moog, but I'm using the Universal Audio Mini Moog uh, instrument. But more just as a... Almost like a rider. Sorry, <laughs> riser. There are no riders here. Uh, it's like a, a riser. Um, and this one some, has some side chaining from a kick, obviously. Let's listen to it with the track. Um, interestingly, I uh, just wrote some automation. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, it's annoying, isn't it? Okay. We'll come back to that. We can get rid of this here. I never usually... Firstly, um, it's, it's obviously... Um, Uh, automation is quite a, a, a tricky thing sometimes, and um, I often leave it on touch. But obviously, I've left it on touch and left mute on as part of something that can be automated. Um, so I've enabled mute aut automation and left it on touch. What I would normally do is not enable mute automation, leave it on touch, and then I ride the faders when I need to constantly updating um, the automation in the project uh, and you can see on this particular track there's a lot of automation in terms of volume and then mute so luckily I haven't made too much of a mess here but I would say that can go I think I'm guessing doesn't matter because the track's out. Um, and we just bring this. Mm. Let's. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, that didn't work. Okay, that means there's something. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let's get this right just in case. All right, so that's unmuted now. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I have messed that up, but let's just hear what it sounds like here. Oh, I need to turn this back on, that's why. Okay. Oh, some Prophet 12 here as well. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, all right, that's, uh, and that's got a bit of verb. Um, favorite vintage verb do you know the key command for closing a plugin window if you don't check this out this is of course on Mac option command W and I just like I don't know if you can see that I'm using the thumb to do option and command together and then W uh, when I learned that command, it really improved my life. So I really hope that that improves your life too. Okay. Oh, we've got some roads over here, which I don't know if you can see. No, it's just behind the cam camera over there. Um, the actual roads that I mean, uh, that is, I mean, um, Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on in Ableton with this, I think. Um, and here I've simply added some delay. The newfangled audio delay. Let's just bypass that. Let's unbypass it. What's it doing? Okay, it's a little subtle tape delay.
in fact, if you can see this, it is actually one of my presets, um, which I gave to Newfangled Audio. Anyway. Is there anything else? Um, we talked about the Lyra, I think, already. You know, and that, that Lyra's got some stuff going on in Ableton as well, for sure. Um, I'd say there's some beat repeat and that sort of thing. Um, okay. Pluck. Sounds like a pluck. Um, did have that on there, interestingly. What's that like? Oh, it's got some chorus. That's quite different, isn't it? Okay, let's talk about the master bus. Um, now, um, I've talked before about how I have basically everything going into a, um, you can see it here, um, a fader, a auxiliary fader, which then goes into the master bus. So that means I can control how much signal is going into the master bus plugins. And if we listen to this, so uh, let's just bring this back up here. Okay, not much, obviously, but. Yeah, I think that's a good example. The more I add in, the more crunch I get. So let's see what some of the things that are happening. Again, the God particle, which you see a lot of my stuff without this limiter, just this one, this thing, <laughs> it's at usually about half, 50%. Let's just bypass everything except for that. And bypass that. Uh, just check and you know the key command for bypass. Hold down command and click on the plug. That's bypassed. All right, and the studio, of course. It's a bit of low end there. And this is what I like to use for my mastering. Uh, quite a lot. I, I will be using um, the master desk and this is actually the plugin alliance version. Sometimes I use the universal audio version. It depends. If I ever work, if I'm working on my laptop, I'll use this version um, because it doesn't require the satellite. All right, so that's bypassed. Let's bring it in. All right, let's push that bit. I like what the foundation does. It's just, it's basically a, a sort of an EQ. And this is the, um, this is a sort of saturation. Some stereo. And the resonant filters have auto solo on. So as soon as I touch one of these, it will solo what the filter is doing. So that is what I'm taking out by using this filter. Actually, 
See, I wouldn't mind getting rid of that, so let's put on that. Same with down here. It's good to get rid of that. So it's 160 hertz, very nasal. Or this. Oh, that's more nasal. Actually, that's quite... So, I'm just changing what I've done, but... See, there you go. Um, I just wanted to change the hat level, and of course, what I ended up doing is recording some automation. Let's see if I, I can always just undo that. Uh, undo record automation. Um, okay, uh, and in the master chain, after the master desk, we have the SSL bus compressor. Again, it's not doing much. I think when I opened the project, this was down here, so it wasn't pushing it as much. But, um, you know, it can do a lot, but I tend to just have it, so it's just tickling it. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. That's it, that's the mix for Nomina. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the finished track so you can hear it.